focus. Yeah. Guess where we are. Ooh, okay, okay. How many guesses do I get? I don't want to play this fucking game. <laughs> I don't want to play this sick, disgusting game with okay, you. Okay, I'll go with 29 guesses. I get 29 guesses. Okay, All right. Start. Eiffel Tower Basement. Yes. <laughs> you got it. Hey. Hey. We're well, usually, you. well, I, I'm just going to say, usually we record the podcast in Lucas's apartment, but today we are in, have you guys ever heard of Guantanamo Bay? <laughs> We they made said it. They closed it. We're collabing. We're, <laughs> <laughs> We're partnering on some content. <laughs> we did a thing. <laughs> um, Osama bin Laden is alive. He got bangs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said he got bangs. I did say he got. Oh, you did. <laughs> what did you think I said? He got. I thought banged? you said he got banged. Oh, no, certainly. That's not what anyone would call it. Zero <laughs> Dark Thirty. I was thinking, yeah, I saw the movie. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> in, the, in the movie, what's her name? Hillary Clinton goes, you guys, we banged him. <laughs> yeah, he was like, totally smashed. <laughs> <laughs> Osama, he smashed right now. Yeah, boom. Boom. <laughs> but yeah, we're, yeah, we're recording we are here. from Guantanamo. How are we doing? Two nosy meerkats. <laughs> With prisoners watching us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is Guantanamo Bay still active or is yeah. it shut down? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sad. Yeah. Mm. It's one of those things like, we'll stop it, but then they never do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you said we'll stop it as in you and I will stop it. <laughs> we're going to get no, to guys, the bottom of this. No, guys, we're joking around about this, but like we will stop Guantanamo Bay. It will yeah. be me and Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> we not- march up right to their door. We knock and we're like, hey. Cut it out. <laughs> and, they, and they'll be like, well, no one's ever asked this nicely. So, okay, <laughs> no one's we'll ever said please before the please, magic word. Uh, we're begging you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We are here recording live from Guantanamo Bay. Should we say what uh, Guantanamo Bay is also known as? Yeah. It is also known as Stand Up New York's podcast studio. Yeah. That's where we really are. That's where we really are. But we'll call it Gitmo from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think it'd be good for the brand. I mean, probably not. But yeah. hey, we're here for we're here for a good time, not a long not time. Not a long time. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We walk out the door. Stand up New York just shoots us on the spot. <laughs> Thank you to Stand Up New York for being Thank our you partners. Thank you to Stand Up New York for being our partners. We're very excited to at last be in the studio. We've been partnering with them uh, for a little bit. They've been uh, producing our episodes, editing stuff together, doing an amazing job. This is our first episode properly in studio. Yeah. I don't have to dismantle these cameras afterwards done i know yeah and if you guys are i i know that it's an adjustment from lucas's couch and lucas's apartment yeah. i don't want you guys to worry lucas still lives there i do he sees it every day <laughs> and just because you don't see it doesn't mean he doesn't see it I, sp- I i give it to my ex to take care of sometimes we split custody <laughs> of your house yeah my apartment of yeah. your parents apartment you give yeah. it to your weird ex <laughs> don't don't look into it too much <laughs> this is a oh. Yeah, I was, try, I was trying. To be, I was trying to. I was trying to make a joke like I lo- like uh, like I'm sharing custody of my apartment in a divorce, and uh, that's why we're not there anymore. Boy, I'm got like, it. Well, know. that didn't resonate with me because divorce is no joke. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, divorce happens to fifty percent of people. Yeah, especially the people who deserve it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Has anyone been divorced who you were like no? They were too good for it. Um, I feel like a lot of couples on The Bachelor get divorced. Mm, but they deserve it. No, sometimes I was like, oh, I was rooting for you guys. Aww. But most of the time they deserve it. But it's more of like, you can always tell the couples on reality TV when they're compatible versus when they're incompatible. Yes. Well, yeah. that, that like, I forget their names, but they were always fighting on Love is Blind. Was it season two? Oh, um, oh gosh. Very tall dude and, yes, a woman, uh, and a woman who loved costumes. Nick and Danielle. Nick and Danielle. Oh, but he was so joyless. That's he was. Why, yeah, he wasn't he fun. Fucking asshole. When yeah. I saw that they were like breaking up, I was like, good. You yeah. both deserved more fitting people. I think it was like Danielle liked dressing up as like mustard and jumping on the table. And, and Nick he was liked like, going adults. to bed early. <laughs> yeah. Nick was like, we're adults. Yeah. Which is crazy because like, well, I don't know. There's no, I don't think adults right now are very adult. Yeah. Being an adult, it's not in. Uh, it's really not. It's I th- not. I think that like the, the wonderful you know, younger people who listen to this podcast, like I genuinely think you guys are all way more stressed out than we are. 
I do Lucas think- and I did mushrooms very recently in the middle of the day with friends. We did. What are you guys doing? Homework? <laughs> hey, no, that's, what you, that's what you have to look forward to. That's what your days are going to look like when you hit your late 20s. <laughs> You're going to do mushrooms every day. Exactly. Yeah. Nonstop. Don't do that. No, Don't no, 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 no. We are, we, are not, we are not endorsing that, but we did have an awesome time. I mean, I had an awesome time at least. I, I kind of saw God, but other than that, I had a great time. <laughs> what did she look like? She, mm, she was man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're like, no, 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 no. Back to tradition. He's a guy. Yeah. He was, he was like, I love, what's his name again? Andrew Tate. He like, yeah. he was like obsessed with him. <laughs> and he, he was very like 2000s misogynist. Like I get really? to, I get to heaven. God was like, make me a sandwich. I was like, that's literally so outdated. He was the king of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, controversial take. Yeah. If Kevin James said the most misogynistic thing to me, I'd be like, do you, queen? Yeah. He, there's something so endearing about him. I don't get He's what got, he says. But all, oh, I Some misogyny is fine if it's Kevin yeah. James. <laughs> Paul Blair Mall Cop. Nice. Paul Blair Mall Cop? Never seen that, but I've heard it's, it's beautiful. Not all cops are bad. <laughs> 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 most of them are, but not Paul Blair. Not him. <laughs> Love him. Love, Love his him. work. Oh, you wow. know what my secret is though? Yeah, I've never seen it either. <laughs> Should we watch it? That's Victoria's secret that she that <laughs> you've never <laughs> seen it. <laughs> Victoria's secret is I've never seen Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What's Victoria? Yeah, when <laughs> when girls are like in seventh grade, people are like, "What's Victoria's secret that she's a man?" Because like we all grew up with all of that shit, yeah. you know. But what Which if, is great comedy. What if some seventh grade girl was like, Victoria's Secret, <laughs> she's never seen the 2008 movie Paul Blart Cop. Mall Cop. Paul Blart Cop. <laughs> Paul Blart Cop <laughs> with PBC? Kevin James. Yeah, you fuck with PBC, bro? <laughs> Who's the secondary lead in Paul Blart Mall Cop? I feel like it was Rosario Dawson. I may be, I may be mixing that up with another illustrious Kevin James picture. I'm but, Googling it right now. Yeah. Aww. But yeah, I, I no, I never saw it. I was never... I, I was a big fan of I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, which I've since realized a lot of people don't like. It was Rainy it was very... Rodriguez. I don't even know who that is. What the? Rainy Rodriguez? She seems lovely. Okay. She plays Maya Blart. Maya <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Maya's such a beautiful, like, ethnically ambiguous name. And yeah. like, Maya. And then it's like, Blart. <laughs> Say Maya again. <laughs> Maya. <laughs> Maya. <laughs> yeah, why am I saying it like Mario? Yeah. Maya, Maya, Maya Super Maya, bro. What did you like about I Pronounce You, Chuck and Larry? I thought it was just a very tender movie about the power of friendship. I should, I should get into that. It's, it's such, it really is. I mean, to be fair, this is coming from like a cis straight dude, what? but. Oh yeah, have you heard of those? We're all the rage. You're all the rage right now. Yeah, That's we're, true. yeah, we're, we're, we're taking over. Um. <laughs> That's that's something no one can get behind. I'm sorry, guys. But <laughs> Lucas is like, straight men are taking over. We are watching I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry nonstop. Yeah. This is this is beating everything everywhere all at once as the best picture from now on at every Academy <laughs> Awards. <laughs> Every time they're like, sorry, we gotta give it to I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. It'd once be again. fucked up if best picture was like movies from every year. Mm. And oh. the same movie just kept winning it over and over again from every that. year. That feels like the Emmys for a while, like Modern Family won every single time. Oh, oh, I did. I never watched the Emmys. Right. Not once. Never seen it. Well, it's not like. I do remember own, that they won. It's a not bunch. like its own show. Like it's kind of the same thing every year. Yeah, yeah. They don't really have a season. No, they don't. What do you think of the Oscars? I loved it. Yeah, I really like. I didn't. I was. Um, I didn't watch like the first like hours, but I watched like the latter like most of it. I loved it. I like. I um. I teared up when I saw uh, Michelle Yeoh win and Ki Hui Kwan. I th- it was just so beautiful. Yeah. I loved it so much. And then I talked with um, previous guest of the podcast, Michael Aber, because he, and I, I have no problem saying this, hates everything everywhere all at once. A lot of film people do. Yeah. Yeah, which drives me crazy. Because it's like, why can't we have any fun? No, I, I consider myself like a film guy. I'm a someone I'm someone that loves movies. I don't understand why it's cool to dislike that movie somehow. I think a lot of people think it's like overly saccharine. Um, or that it gives an ending that's too neatly tied up or satisfying. 
for me personally, it just hit exactly the right note because mm. as someone with a slightly homophobic immigrant mom, I was like, I love how we're diving deep into the mind of a woman who just thinks being gay is so disgusting. Yeah. But like we're still giving her compassion. Indeed. Yeah. It was very healing. Like the hot dog fingers was just kind of a joke to everyone. So For good. me, that was like this woman thinks that every lesbian, she's like, what the fuck do they do? And she thinks that what it must be is they're just, they have these dicks on their hands. Like that is the way homophobia is. It creates these like really yeah. visceral images in your brain. I when think. did you have your dicks removed? Um, it was actually a really complicated procedure and I don't really like to Oh, you had multiple it. visits? Yeah. They, this is like wisdom teeth. They're like, oh, we only got three. We need to. It's kind of like Gardasil where you get three shots. <laughs> it's like get your booster dick removal <laughs> yeah I, I i actually have to get the dicks removed every year because they kind of keep growing in oh yeah, yeah they're like when did you get your dick removed uh, oh i i keep it i keep it on a chain <laughs> 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 i got it i got to remove the uh, uh, fortnight ago oh that's what that is yeah it's, it's like after birth like women will keep the placenta oh yeah yeah i remember i remember burying my umbilical cord where uh, in the ground. Can listeners find it? <laughs> in the ground. <laughs> listeners, Patreon exclusive, Lucas's placenta. Or I no, will what be did you say? Uh, my umbilical cord. Lucas's umbilical cord. Yes. Placenta. Somewhere in the ground. <laughs> you scavenger keep, hunt. You keep adding placenta into this. The placenta wasn't <laughs> wasn't added. It was just the cord. But I'm going to be releasing clues. Yeah. Placenta is what you get for $5 extra on the Supercast. Yeah. You start with the umbilical cord, then you get the magical placenta. That's a membership level. Placenta yeah, level. Yeah, it's <laughs> placenta cats. Yeah. You can be a placenta <laughs> cat if you want. A placenta um, cat? What? Like oh. a meerkat. I don't want to say placenta cat. It sounds turfy. I was imagining- I don't want to do some turfy shit on this podcast. I was imagining like a meerkat, but like- it was photoshopped to be just made completely of placenta. I was like, this is awful. It's like a- You were imagining that? When? When I looked in your eyes. Yeah, that's what most people say. Yeah, I see placenta cats when I look in your eyes. <laughs> my eyes just start shining that. Um, just so like you're leaving deep clues to where your I am leaving cord clues is. to where my uh, umbilical cord is hidden. No, it's... um, oh, oh, excuse me. Table just like leaned over a little bit. No, but uh, it is it is buried on private property in upstate New York. That's where it is buried. Your private property? Yep. You sure? You will find out. Yep. How hard is Sanable. it to get yeah. your extract your uh, umbilical cord? Oh uh, well, you have to. Well, you have to put in like the right paperwork with the uh, with the U.S. Census. <laughs> <laughs> the census. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you do with that shit? It's kind of like the FDA. You know, they do food and drugs. The census does like the population and the umbilical cords. I'm sorry, it's crazy. The FDA does food and drugs. Those things are so different. Exactly. Like, sure, sometimes they coalesce together in a fun night, but yeah, it's food and drugs. That it's is like an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Pick one. Yeah, there's too much responsibility for one agency. Food and drugs. Yeah, exactly. Why? It's should also each one is fun enough on its own. L divide the responsibilities. Let people delegate. find their yes. Delegate. Delegate. That's the key to success. Yeah. Indeed, like what we're doing right now. I honestly think Lucas, we could run a government. How big of a country? Sp small. Small. Okay. You and me. You okay? <laughs> me and you. Okay. Wait. You, me, and one really susceptible person. <laughs> <laughs> one fucking moron. <laughs> Are you thinking of like starting a cult like that or or oh, yeah. be totalitarian or would it be democratic? No, not total. What do you think this is? I don't know. Well, I think it would be funny if we like held like elections, but it was just over brunch because it's only three of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like having a child and having them pick like which divorced parent to live with. Oh, God. Yeah. Because like basically me. the election would be like you and me are both running for power. So like mm -hmm. the third person has to vote. Yeah. So they have to vote for you or me. Yeah. I'm sorry, I do need to ask, though. Let's say that you and your wonderful girlfriend, Sylvie, let's say you guys had uh, children, and for horror of horrors, you it wasn't working out, you guys got divorced. Would you make your kids decide? <laughs> is that what... I was like, whoa. Okay, you, At that subject, I was like, is that what you would do? Make them choose? I'm going to answer your question with a weird anecdote, and then okay. I'm going to come back to your question. Cool, cool. Okay. Um, when I worked at a summer camp when I was like 18, yes. I was one of the counselors, and there was another guy, Phil, who was a counselor, and he was really cool. 
And then there was a head of shop whose name I won't say because she's, I think, a Portland comedian, hopefully doing well. She was she was a real piece of work. Okay. And there were, I think, five or six uh, counselors in training. And the counselors in training were assistant directors to each sketch that me, Phil, and this woman wrote. We okay. should give her a name. Let's call her Julia. Julia. Me, Phil, and Julia. We Let's call her Julia Rose. Julia Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Julia Rose. Yep. We can't <laughs> say what we can't say what we want to say. Um these children had to pick which one of the counselors they wanted to work with. Mm. And the reason they had to pick was because Julia was holding a meeting and I think she knew she wasn't well liked. And she said, All right, I want you guys to pick which one of the counselors you want to work with. And everybody went around and she'd say, okay, Ellen, who do you want to work with? And Ellen would sit silent with wide eyes and she'd go, I I think for this semester, I want to work with Gabby. And Julia would go, okay, um, Zachary, who do you want to work with? You'd go, I think, I think I want to work with Phil. And then it went around until it was clear how awkward it was that nobody was saying Julia. And you just watched Julia get like angrier and angrier until you could tell that there was like actual steam coming out of her ears. Anyway, Ooh. that's what I imagine a divorce settlement is like. Right. Can I ask, like, were you like quietly just like really satisfied that she was getting so angry? Oh, it was delicious. Oh, I loved yeah. it. I think if it was me and Sylvie and our children had to pick who to live with, I would mm -hmm. try to make it even more awkward. I would be like, okay, kids, like, who do you want to live with? And then I'd be like, but you can only get to live with who you want to live with. It's, you answer one question. Who's the sexier parent? <laughs> <laughs> Who's hotter? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> which one of us do you want to bang more? Yeah, which parent would you fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you were our kids. Ew. I mean, like, if you were at a bar and you didn't yeah. know us. If you, if you didn't know us, who would you want to come? Who looks more snatched right now? I mean, it's obviously her. We were at a bar one time and this guy. Uh, I think your kids would want to fuck you. <laughs> I hope so. Lucas, I hope my kids want to fuck me one day. <laughs> we were at a bar one, one time and this guy hit on her by saying, she's cute, but you fascinate me. <laughs> what a funny thing to say. I hope our kids say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, you are all of us. <laughs> What? <laughs> Do you know what my impression is of if the um, Ariana DeBose song had taken place in uh, Germany? Oh, please. Angela Merkel did the thing. <laughs> Boo. Stupid. Grow up, Gabby. Oh, my God. I don't want you to sit in a corner for that. Okay. Yeah. I'm waiting. Yeah. Would you yeah. make your kids choose between you and a significant other? Would I make them? And how? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I I don't think I would choose. I think that I would opt for like shared custody. I, I know that's no, a boring answer. answer. Um, but if I if I had to give any criteria, I would say, uh, hey, which one do you think is just? Uh, which one do you think is better? I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't actually. I don't. I'm not actually coming up with any like fun answers right now. I'm. I'm really struggling. No, you're too empathetic. Yeah, I it's am. Awful. I'm too earnest I know. for this. You're yeah. Too kind. Yeah. Yeah. Boring. Good day. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait for you to be a dad. You're gonna be a good dad. Thanks. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh no. Wait. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. I've got it. All right. Between the. All right. So. Uh, okay. You're. You're one of my kids. All right. All right. So between. Uh, me, between me and your mom, which one do you think is the bigger dick? <laughs> I'm into that. It would it's be so, it would be so transphobic to say you. you yeah. <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to mom. put my kids on the spot like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Who I, rearranges guts more, do you think? That is such a crazy image to me. I feel like because of phrases like that, I like grew up thinking like the cervix wasn't a thing. And like yeah. when there was- Oh, like, that it was just like an open gate just inside yes, to the body. I like grew up thinking that like if you had penetrative sex, it like touched your stomach a little and just went, wee. <laughs> it is if you do it right. Hey. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you, if you do the right combination, cervix opens right up. Like an escape room. <laughs> 
Lucas, do you remember when you and I went to that escape room? Oh my! And I yes, and oh. I couldn't put the outfit on. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was a great moment. <laughs> They got so mad at you. They are like, should, okay, fine. Just. You should tell our listeners what happened. Because from my perspective, I feel like I blacked out. Yeah. I remember you just like laughing very, very nervously a lot. Whereas you were trying to, you couldn't figure out like, it was it a sleeve? Was it a leg hole? It was just. So for context, we, Lucas and I were in an escape room and they handed us little outfits to wear. Like, we had to put on these jumpsuits. Like, they were jumpsuits they zip, and they zip up and yeah. Um, uh, and, but I was so nervous because we were in like a fake kidnapping situation. Yeah. And when I'm in a game, like I'm in it, I'm not pretending. You commit like, to the role. I'm not pretending I wasn't actor. kidnapped. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. like, oh my God, I was kidnapped. And in the you context. You yes-ended the situation. In you the context yes-ended. of that, I'm like, well, if I'm kidnapped, like I'm going to be a little nervous to put this outfit on. Because what if I don't put it on right and they shoot me? So I'm like putting the outfit on and I put it on backwards <laughs> instantly. And it's like a jumpsuit. So I have to like turn it around but then it's stuck in my shoes because I didn't take my shoes off. So I was like, if I'm kidnapped, I'm not going to take my shoes off. And then a docent comes up to me and goes, looks like a docent, some of, like, like an experienced person. Like, oh, okay, okay, like okay. someone who worked there, like paid okay. actor. Right, right. They like, do you remember they looked at me and was like, and some of you idiots can't even put a fucking jumpsuit on right. Yeah, I remember that. It was so good. I was really freaking out. It was such a funny moment because me, because Chris Sher was also there and we got, we got our jumpsuits on like lickety split. Yeah, you guys did. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because you guys don't have a big fat juicy ass like some of the rest of us. I think it would make one between us. I think between, between the two of us, guys, we have yeah. one nice, real, a good fucking dump truck. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but between vibes. the two of us, nothing. Yeah. I don't have cheeks. I just have a hole. Where? <laughs> Did I tell you about the woman with the hole in her head? I think I've told this story on the podcast. But for listen, for okay, listener, where about the head? Top, forehead, forehead, forehead. temple, for no, smack dab. Okay, I was I was like here. Oh, right here. Like okay, on the forehead. Yeah, I was uh, with some college friends, and we walked into a McDonald's, uh-huh. and um, I didn't like really see this happen, but I think like secondhand, I was told about it. My friend Steve goes up to the counter to order. He gets his order. He's waiting by his side. And then a woman comes up to him. And this woman has a hole in her head. Just like a tiny hole. How how deep did the hole go? It I'm looked pr- like it sawed her brain. Okay. It was really like a hole in her head. Did you see pink matter? I her? didn't see or anything. Or was it just like this dark? Was all sec- I somehow blacked out that all of this was happening. Uh-huh. And he was just having a conversation with her. He told us about it after. Like, guys, can you believe this happened? And this woman goes, buy me a burger. And he said, Why? And then she just points aggressively to the hole in her head. And he said, oh, okay. And he bought her a burger. <laughs> that is the trump card. Yeah. If I had a hole in my head, I'd be like, buy me everything. Yeah. Fucking do it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I I want to talk a little bit. Did we talk about our uh, mushroom trips on the podcast? No, not on the podcast. Yeah. I would be, I, I would love to hear because that was my first time having like a real trip. Can I ask like what your first experience was like? Because I know you've done it like once before. Yeah, I mean. At least, yeah. I basically only microdose. I feel like that was the closest I've had to like a real mushroom trip. Mm -hmm. And everyone is like, it's this beautiful eye-opening experience. But like, it's really not. It opened my eyes to the fact that sometimes things move weird. And (laughs) sometimes my brain don't work right. Yeah. Uh, I think... You know, we were in a situation with people. Just kind of booping this pillow around. We were in a situation with people we didn't know. Super, I mean, they were good friends of ours, but I I don't think I knew any of them as well as I knew you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was just, I think, constantly worried that everyone in the room, like, hated me. Um, And then at the sort of, like, after I really calmed down from that feeling, which was a lot. Oh, my favorite part of the trip. I don't know if you remember this part, Mm. but... um, our friend said gabby is there any way we can help you right now is there any music we can put on to make this better should we mention names is it all right our friend joan of arc yes said um is there anything we can do to make this better and i was like yeah can we play my favorite album and they said what is it and i said carrie and lowell by sufian stevens Mm -hmm. and they said okay 
what's your real favorite album? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I was like, I didn't expect to be read from my music taste. Yeah, yeah I know. A mushroom trip. I don't remember that, but I remembered you telling me about it and it made me laugh a lot because it was such. It's, it's a great joke Brutal. on their part. <laughs> it was a good joke. Yeah. And then once I got past that, I remember feeling like you know the monologue in your head. Yeah. Thinking, I guess it's called. I don't have that. I know that you don't think. I don't. I don't have a monologue in my head. <laughs> you've you've told you've described it to me as like I don't think, but I guess everybody thinks. No, everybody thinks. It's much more sort of like uh, uh, that's that's basically what's going on in my head. It's much more like concepts and emotions and images and stuff like that. It's Sometimes not, people say to me, "What's in Lucas's mind?" I can't figure him out. I'm like. The answer, a lot more simple than you'd imagine. Wait, who says that? <laughs> I can't remember who said that to me. I mean, sometimes people will just be like, um, oh gosh, I feel like maybe Sylvie once or twice has been like, what's Lucas thinking? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he knows either. Nope. <laughs> no. I'm still, I'm, hey, I got no map. I'm, just, I'm navigating off the seat of my pants. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You're, you're on the... Again, I don't even know what I just said. There are no words up here. It doesn't, yeah. Yeah, and yet we're podcasting. And yet here we are. Yeah. But I remember uh, in the inner monologue I was having, mm. I felt like words were whooshing and the whoosh sound sounded like the closet door that used to be in my childhood bedroom where Whoa. my dad would get his clothes every morning Yeah, and it would go. <laughs> and that was the sound that was happening in my brain. Mm. And they do say mushrooms regresses you to the mind of a child. Oh, yeah. Which is why I think adults like it. Like, I think if you're 14, you shouldn't do mushrooms. Do no. When you're older. Yeah, yeah. If, if it's something. Rush? <laughs> do fentanyl. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Do not. Do, do not do, touch anything. That's not even fun. You won't even like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it even has a dumb name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fentanyl. What are you, uh, what are you, uh, uh, I feel like fentanyl to me sounds like, like an appetizer at a new American restaurant. <laughs> Try the fentanyl <laughs> with a side of bone marrow. It does a little bit. It sounds don't like, do fentanyl. No, it sounds like something made out of like, I don't, I don't know, like celery, like a celery remoulade yes, something. That's what I'm saying. Like fentanyl oh, yeah. roulette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a fentanyl ceviche. Like that, that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like acid washed, you know. <laughs> yeah. What was your mushroom trip like, Lucas? So my mushroom trip. So, uh, what were you gonna say something? Oh, else? I was just gonna say one other thing, which is that I think I realized how truly neurodivergent I am. I was like, I think I might have some kind of like autism or something. Mm -hmm. And then my friend was like, "Can you think of an apple?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they were like, "Well, then you you probably don't have it." Mm. I was like, "I think that they're probably different." indicators than that and they were like that's true you could probably look into that but i do think uh it's a lot of like what my sister and i talk about is that like adhd has a lot of common overlap with other kinds of like neurodivergence and mm -hmm. i definitely do think i definitely do think a little weird yeah so um i for sure do i'm gonna look for in, sure i'm gonna look in well you've talked about how you might yeah. be I don't know. I mean, you can talk about your trip. No, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. Um, I will, I'll talk about my trip. So I will first say that a reason why I wanted to have a trip was because, um, I'm not sure if I've actually spoken about this on the podcast, but I had a very traumatic bout of insomnia that lasted a month in 2018, basically the whole month of July. And it was because of that, that I then found it next to impossible to fall asleep if someone else is in the room. Like I just, I couldn't switch off mm. unless I was alone. And there like been a couple instances where like one time I got very high and I was able to fall asleep because I just sort of forgot there was someone else in the room, but I've had to like sort of subdue a part of myself and, and it's been very rare that that's been able to happen. But I had heard stories that um, like a, a psychedelic trip who can sort of like allow your brain to rewire itself and get past trauma. And I was, I was really interested because of that. And so my experience is I took them and then the, at this apartment where we were taking them, the window was open and oh, I just, this part, oh my yeah, God. 
I assumed that maybe someone was like smoking a joint and they had to keep the window open and it didn't. And so I did, it didn't occur to me that I could ask for the window to be closed because I was very, very cold. And so I whispered over to a friend of, uh, who was also there, uh, cause her coat was like right next to like between us. And I was, I whispered over, I was like, Hey, um, can I borrow? I, I had my coat on already at this point. I had put my own coat on. I was like, can I borrow your coat to put on over mine? I'm really cold. And she was like, okay. And it was her boyfriend's coat. And then every time we kept turning around, you had a Another. different coat on. And because we were all tripping on mushrooms, we were like, I feel like you're growing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're getting enormous. <laughs> yeah. And then... At some point, someone was like, Lucas, are you okay? And I was like, I'm very cold. And uh, someone was like, we can close the window. I was like, that would be nice. And then the window was closed and eventually I took everything and off. And then somebody at the party said, Lucas, I hope you know it's okay for you to have needs. I don't know if you remember that. I think I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. And then I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, I just didn't. I think you and I are both like that, where we don't really know that it's okay to have needs. Yeah. Which is fortunate for me because I don't have any. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You have no needs. I know. You you filter feed like a coral. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need you don't need air, water, nothing. You just you just <gasps> yeah. yeah. You just do that. <gasps> it's sad about coral because I actually think they do have needs. Oh, love. I mean, why do you think? Well, <laughs> 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 next week on Love Island. <laughs> You've seen men, you've seen women, but have you seen, seen coral? coral? Hey, I'm under the water. <laughs> oh, this fish got good, bad, good chat. <laughs> Is that what you saw when you were tripping? Oh, I saw that and more. So what I, the, what I experienced, so like when I felt it like getting really, really intense, like body feeling like it was a little bit different, the world around, like I saw like, I was looking at one person and they had like two eyes, but then like more eyes in diagonal sort of, and it was like growing out like a fractal. And then I was looking around to the left and right and everyone sort of looked like they were really smooth and crispy, kind of like a Pixar movie. Mm. And it was getting very intense. And I was like, I need to lie down. I was, I, because people were like joking, riffing. I was like, I cannot talk. I, can't, I, can't, I, 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 huh. I couldn't do anything. And I, I was ready to just like lie down right where we were sitting. And I, and so I said uh, to our host, I was like, is it okay if I just lie down right here? And she was like, you can go on the bed and lie down. It was like a very beautifully done studio apartment. There was like a bed right behind me. And I looked, I was like, really? She was like, yeah. I was like, that's so wonderful. Thank you. I was just so touched yeah, that needs, I was able to do that. Needs. Yeah. And then uh, I like I laid down. There were like eye masks available, so I was able to just like conk out. And I saw these like fractals of like it was like a mixture of like a dollar bill, the number four, and then my the gate outside my grandmother's house. They were all combining into this like growing, changing fractal that I was watching. I was like, oh, this is it. This is this is drugs, man. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, we're making it sound too much fun. It and was a good we, time. It and was, then we all died. Yeah, and then and then we all found Jesus. Yeah, and we've been living His way ever since. And what's since. her name? Her. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I meant. And what's her vibe? But I said, what's her name? <laughs> God damn it! Am I still on mushrooms? This is oh, horrible. My but, riff game week. No, 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 no. Oh, my riff game has been awful. But then what happened was that because I was going through all that and I was like. Okay, this is a lot, but I was like, I was prepared for it. I was like, okay, you, you, you've heard stories about what trips are like. Just lean into it. Let it happen. Let it take over your body. Let yourself dissolve. It is okay. You're going to be all right. And then what happened was I felt like my body, like my body asleep became a museum that I could walk through. Mm. Like it, I grew into like just this enormous structure. And then like my essence was like just walking through it and like, examining every part of my body and it felt like the mushrooms were telling me witness everything that your body is right now because oh, I because I, like I want you to remember what all of this looks like and feels like wow this is something that we that we the mushrooms need you we to the mushrooms. we the we the people speak that is a shoegaze band we the mushrooms, <laughs> we the mushrooms. <laughs> that's what it felt like and then 
I, I could still hear everyone's conversation. Like I was still, um, even though I had dissolved, I could still like hear everything and everyone's words. I could see them like shooting around the canopy of the museum. Mm. And they were like golden and there were like sparks trailing behind them, like shooting stars. And it was just, it was so beautiful to see that become just part of the museum and just part of the exhibit or whatever I was looking at. I was like sitting on the floor. I was like, this is so beautiful. That is so much more of a creative experience than yeah. I had. And then wh one, one last thing, I, I will be done soon. But um, I then heard, cause it was like, it got pretty garbled. Cause I was just like, I was in my own world. But then I heard very clearly someone whisper who I now realize who it was, but I heard someone say, Hey, should we check on him? And I think that person was talking to you. And then I shot up. I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I was, and then I was, I like said like what I just experienced and felt why it was so significant. And then that was like over like the crest of the experience. And then I was able to come back with the group and sort of be a person and finish my drawing. And it was a beautiful day. What, what did you draw again? I drew a flower. <laughs> After all that shit, <laughs> you drew a fucking flower. Okay. This is very rude. <laughs> I love, I framed this flower. I have it in my room. I got really? a. I, I want to see it. I, got, I can show. I'll show you a picture afterwards. But yeah, I, I I got a frame for it and I put it up in my room. See, my I was what I was gonna say is my drawing was possibly even worse than that. I drew like a. Um, I had a coloring book and I think I used like one color pen and I just drew squiggles like That's going great. all What's the way down that? the tree. But at some point, somebody said to me, "Hey, you know you can use another color pen, right?" And I was like, I think the words I said were. It's a race to the finish. <laughs> Damn, dude. I I realized on that trip, I think that I'm not very visually minded. Really? I also realized that when I had COVID. Because when I have COVID. Oh, yeah. When I have Fevers COVID, do that to you. Fevers make you go loopy. I think that also there's this fear that you're going to lose your smell and taste. Like, because some strains do that. And I think the, the, the night I got COVID for the second time... I was like in the shower on an edible and I was like having a panic attack that I was going to lose smell. And I was like, I didn't know I was this into smell. I didn't know that I was like a greyhound, like running around with my nose up first, trying to smell everything. Yeah. But I realized for me that probably is the most important sense. Whoa. Yeah. Other than the sixth. Love. I do <laughs> think I might be psychic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I need the be I need what when you started thinking this and the reasons why. Um some things are more powerful than mushrooms and that's talking shit with your friends. Okay. So I was talking shit with my friends one day and I said I hate my best friend's boyfriend. I just wish they would break up already. And that night I got a text that they'd broken up. And I didn't think much of it cuz I've said shit like that a lot about my best friend and her boyfriend because I talk shit a lot with my friends. Next day, I'm talking shit with my friends again, this time about a different couple. Okay. And I go, this girl is riding this other girl's coattails so hard. I wish that she would break free of her and that they would just break up. Mm -hmm. And I check Instagram and out of morbid curiosity, I go to that girl's page. Every photo of them together is gone. Now, what are the odds that two times in a row I'm talking shit with my friends and I manifest? That's what it's called, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the two most spiritual people in the world in the like, podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably what it's yeah, called. Yeah, you, you probably said the right word. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm like clairvoyant because I, I do think I put that out into the universe and it happened. Can I tell you what I think is a real possibility here. What I think is that if you're really close with someone, I really believe that you can get to a point where your sort of brain waves connect over massive distance Ooh. a little bit. I, ge I genuinely believe I this. I like that. I really do because there have been times where I'm really, really close with someone and we will come up with like the same, I independently come with like the same idea to go to a certain place or even to use like a certain word or that like we, neither of us have used in ages. And we just thought that's a good word we should do. And it's like the exact same. There are moments like if you're really close with someone that you arrive at the same thought naturally. And I think it's because of, I do believe there is some sort of force that we're not 
exactly aware of. Like my, this is, I don't even know if this story is real. This is completely a rumor, but it's a good story. It's a, it's a bit, anyway, my dad told me ages ago about an experiment done that the Navy did somehow. I don't know how he found this out, but they like, they took like a mother rabbit and like a few of her babies and they separated them, took the mother down into a submarine, like many, 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 many thousands of feet or something below sea level, totally separate. And what's horrible is that they then killed each of the babies like hours apart. You can do anything for science. You want to kill babies, go into... That's why I don't trust STEM people. I don't, you, us, not even women in STEM, worst of all. Especially not women in STEM. Women well, in STEM? Ugh. That's mainly because they're women. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they kill the babies. But then they know... what you all should do if yeah. you want to be scientists. They were, but they apparently connected like electrodes to like the mother rabbit. And every single time that one of her babies <gasps> was killed, they noticed like a spike in her... Um, in her like stress levels, hormones or whatever. And it happened on the dot every single time. Totally separate. No way for any commu- anything, but they were just, they were connected. And I really believe that there are forces that connect us all in ways that we are not aware of yet. I do believe this. I still can't believe that's an experiment you can do. I'm sorry. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's horrible. Deranged. And I have, I have no, this is unconfirmed. I have absolutely no, <laughs> yes. I said that at the beginning. I was oh, like, I have. True. I, I did say that. I was like, I have no idea if this I is have real. No idea if this. This happened. is literally just a story my dad told me, and he said, "I have no idea if it's real." But I was told that, and I thought it was. A, I thought it was a good story. What and is I was the like, most insane story you've been told in your childhood that now you're like, "There's no way that was real," but you believed it for a long time. In terms stuff that um, that I now realize, like, there's no way that was real. Yeah. That's tough because I uh, excuse, I was told a lot of stories like that. A slightly, my dad told me a lot of stories where he like just like flirted with the occult. Like there were times that he met like a psychic who read his mind, and he that uh, like she could see a briefcase that he had at the time, and also could see like. Um, because my dad used to row, he was in crew in college, and she could see like these boats in the water that he would, and she was like reading his mind, and that she, and then, and she was like a Cockney woman from England. She's like, yeah, I've got a sister who can move stuff with it with a mind. My dad's got the gift as well. <laughs> the gift. Yeah, even though that's a northern accent, forgive me, but um, uh, You'll but never um, be forgiven for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry the, to the UK. Mixing up the regions. Yeah, the mixing UK up the occult. regions. You're a monolith. Um, <laughs> but um, but my uh, my dad then said like um, either with her or with another somehow psychic that he met, um, that he was told, uh, don't look for evil in the world because you will find it. Yeah, but you don't need a psychic to know that shit. I mean, if oh, you yeah. just want to see evil in the world, you. Can <laughs> I've just- been to Bushwick. <laughs> <laughs> If you just want to see evil in the world, you come right here to this yeah. podcast, baby. We're going to say some evil shit. Yeah. Uh, I'm try- were, were you ever told anything by uh, parents or older uh, people in your life that you were like, this is bullshit? Yeah, I had a, um, I had a gym teacher in um, uh, third grade, and he would make us all line up and make sure our shoes would, were tied. And he was like, the reason I do this is because... Once upon a time, long ago, there was a man. I was a hoe. I was a hoe. <laughs> Once upon a time, not long ago, Go, I, I was, was a hoe. hoe. I'm admitting it. I'm yeah, sorry. and then he started dancing. Nice. It was so he. Thinking about him, yeah, that would never be him. He was this giant man with like a tall heel. people can dance. He was short. He had a he had oh he's he had a beer belly bigger than like. Sometimes people have a beer belly, but they also have a beer physique. Mm -hmm. He had a perfectly normal guy physique, but he just had a beer belly that was like out to here. One time, oh my God, I was such a dick. I love an out of shape gym teacher. There's something so honest about that. It was like fourth grade. I went up to him and I said, hey, Mark, when's the baby due? I was such a dick as a child was. Okay, but it was because he pulled shit like this. He He made us all line up and he was like, once this guy's house caught on fire and I knew him and 
he was trying to run out of his house, but then he tripped over his shoelace because he didn't tie his shoes and he died. And that's why everybody <laughs> needs to tie their shoes. Yeah. I, I love like, those scare stories. I was like, why illustrate? Why not be like, hey, it would be physically more comfortable for you if you tied your shoes. That would just be too simple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, it's you do need fear. A little bit of fear is like it's just a little. I think it I think it does help. How would you instill fear in a child? <laughs> <laughs> now that we're on the record about it. Lizzie. Um I don't know. I, I do. I will say that, like, if I was a kid, that would be a good motivator for me. Sort of like you, you shouldn't step on a crack to, because it would break your mother's back. Like that the obvious bullshit. But it did make me avoid stepping on cracks like it did work. I, t I would be there with my mom and I would be like, let's see if this works. <laughs> no, I'm not to like make let's her do back science. break, yeah. but I would be like, well, you know, we're going to do an experiment. If I yeah. step on the crack and her back breaks, I'll know it worked or not. And her back would be just fine. Still is. Yeah. <laughs> All the cracks I step on, nothing works. <laughs> it would be cool if you like did like one really good step on a crack and then it, like she was like, oh, that's so much better. It's chiropractic. <laughs> yeah, it's chiropractic. It's a chiropractor video, but you're just stepping on a crack. Man. Yeah. Do you think chiropractors are scams? I did. I don't know. I some of them maybe. I don't. Well, it's it depends on like what you have it for. If you're trying, if you're trying to cure too much with a good crack, then obviously it's a scam. But if you go in just being like, ah, I'm a bit stiff and I, I need to be, I need to be loosened up, then it does, and then you feel better. Then like, I guess it's real. Have you been adjusted? I have once. It's kind of. It feels kind of good, right? It's extraordinary, but I, I don't think it's a good thing for you to do. Probably not. Apparently, it's extremely unhealthy for you. Yeah, but, I really but like oh it. my god, does it feel good? Yeah. Don't get chiropractor children. Do yeah. Gentle. I once had, um, I think it's called a TENS unit. It's like, oh. a, it's like these electric pads they put on somewhere in your I, body. I've done that. It's and so they like nice. surge electricity. And that was gorgeous. It's very nice. Oh my God. That was amazing. My eyes are rolling back. I'm like, dude, do whatever you want to just put that on me again. It felt so good. Yeah. Oh my God. Beautiful. Have you ever had like a favorite medical procedure? <laughs> Ooh, good question. A favorite medical procedure. I like acupuncture. I guess I wouldn't really call that a... No, it is a medical procedure. I like acupuncture a lot. Hmm. Um, I honestly really liked going to the dentist. Hmm. I know it's psychotic, but I just always had a really good experience there. That's and good. I kind of like the farce of how there's entire instruments in your mouth and yet they'll ask you questions. Yeah, I do like that. Answer. I love the challenge. I kind of like uh, when they're like, how's school? But you can't say anything because it would be rude to say. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this little game we're playing, what are we doing here? Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of another favorite. I, th For me, <clears throat> I think having my wisdom teeth taken out was actually one of my favorites. What? Nobody says that. No, because here's... People hate it. Oh, well, I... It was definitely stressful yeah. because I had to take care of myself for a few days, mm -hmm. which was not fun. And I also had a playwriting assignment due. Did so you get I, the chipmunk cheeks? Um, Not that big. Mm. The swelling wasn't that big and I healed really quickly. Like a week afterwards, I was like completely fine. Have you considered you might be Peter Parker? Peter Parker? Oh, because of... Uh, because Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, I'm familiar with him. <laughs> with his work. Yeah, I'm familiar with his work. Why, why do you say? Because I feel like he heals from things easily because he's a spider. I guess maybe. Hmm. I'll think I think maybe. I kind of see you giving off Spider Man vibes. Yeah. And like I got I'm secret your, superpowers. And I'm your Mary Jane. Yes. <laughs> Smart. I think that there should be more, um, like, uh, cartoons or comics or movies where there's not a female lead. She's just kind of like a weird round lesbian who runs around. <laughs> I think that'd be great. It's <laughs> a, a great idea. It's a great idea. Hey, Mary idea. Jane, you excited to be back in school? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about it. I, 
<laughs> oh my god! For those who are not on for those camera, who, yeah. For those of you who are not on camera, I just did a pristine Gabby impression, purely physical, no voice. Yeah, it, it, Lucas's impression to me is all physical, and when all of my friends see it, they're like, "How is that so accurate?" Yeah, I love that everyone in your life agrees is uh, that it's good. It's, that makes me so happy. I did one for uh, Sylvie. I sent yeah, a video for her birthday, and she said this was so good. She lost her damn mind. Yeah. Yeah, I realized I not to like toot my own horn, but I am very observant. I will say you that are. I'm a very observant guy. Yeah, I, you I are. take in a lot of the world around me. Yeah, I yeah. Th do you think you're more observant of people or of things? I think my brain doesn't know how to make the distinction. Interesting. I don't because I I don't think I'm good at focusing in on one thing and tuning out the rest of it. I'm always taking in everything around me. Where it be people, things like objects. It's I I I take in a lot of detail. Wow, yeah. that is why sometimes you're looking at stuff and I don't know what the hell you're looking at. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think I'm obsessively um, always like looking, yeah. observing the people around me, but I'm mm. almost never observing anything. Interesting. I'm not particularly attentive to detail. I'm, I'm a very detail-oriented person. Yeah. yeah, very, I'm always, yeah. I'm more big picture, which is why I like like producing, like run of show and live stuff, like live audience stuff. And that's I. That's why I don't like producing because it's too big really? of a picture. Yeah. It's too big of a picture for me. It's way too much for me to like grasp because I, I feel like I'm, my brain is already so overwhelmed by the, by the world around me that I need like a smaller task to focus on. Which is honestly, I think a reason why I've been successful on TikTok because yeah. it's such it's such a simple little thing to just over focus on. That's it's one thing. It's like it's so simple, and I'm like, okay, now I can just drill into this every single day. That's yeah. sort of it's sort of how I need I need like a small thing to do. I can't I too big of a picture. I need to delegate that elsewhere. I can't do that. That's why I didn't like TikTok because it's like, what am I gonna do looking at this one screen all day? Yeah, I want to be looking at like five million things. Mm. People are different. Yeah, you know? people are different. But this is a reason why. Uh, maybe I've mentioned this before, but I have recently realized that I it is possible that I am on the autism spectrum. Mm. I have not I have not gotten an official diagnosis, uh, nor am I seeking one. But I I have a bit about this now uh, in my stand up, which you guys probably see soon. Oops, excuse me. Um, and uh, it's just a conversation where I had with my therapist where um, she was like, yeah, you know, you know, you probably need to like take better. It's, it's something you need to do to like uh, plan out the things you say because you want to like affect people the way you want it just maybe takes you a little bit of extra effort and i was like okay um i feel like you're saying you think i'm on the autism spectrum and she said yes <laughs> <laughs> and uh i was just it was it was that easy and it yeah what's interesting is that since then i've felt the effects of it more but here's the question can you imagine an apple Yes. Oh, I can imagine an apple See, in my mind. See, this is what I'm saying, because I can fucking imagine an apple. I think I'm autistic, yeah. too. Yeah, no, I, I heard that you can't imagine visually things like, you can't imagine, like, you know what a beach looks like, but you can't imagine the picture of a beach. I'm like, I can easily do that. Not only can I imagine an apple, I love apples. Love apples, too. Yeah. They're great. A beach, I actually can't imagine as well, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a special grade autism. <laughs> The, uh, the beach, I imagine like a clip art beach, an apple. That shit's vivid in my mind because an apple is- With a beach, you still see the watermark? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, whatever, Getty images. Cl yeah. Clippy is in the side of the beach. Like, how can I help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had an issue reading like body language or like facial expression. I don't think I've ever had an issue with that. But there are times where I feel like my senses are like overwhelmed and that there are like, especially with like my sometimes issues with speech that that feels like very much a part of that. Yeah. There is also a kind of, I think it's almost like it's a spectrum. <laughs> I just die on the spot <laughs> for that. Um, I yeah. think neurodivergence is something that affects more people than it doesn't. Like, I think that mm. there's a lot of people who just cannot handle the way that the world is set up and situated. And 
The only reason I think yeah. not everybody's neurodivergent is because I know people who can handle that. I'm always like, literally oh, yeah. how? Yeah, no, I've been, I, I talked about like, I talked with like Tina, like how she's like, I can tune out anything that I. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. And I'm like, that makes no, I have no idea what that's, I cannot fathom what that's like. Yes. Yeah, so and I'm envious that way. anyone can do that. I know. So envious. I, I think it's pretty crazy, for example, that like I snore and she, and Sylvia's just like, I literally like don't even pay attention to it. I just go to sleep. Incredible. Like I, you know. Yeah. Amazing. I uh. think also growing up where we did, I, th it's, I, I don't think I would raise kids in New York city. Like no. I, I, I'm very happy with the amount of like diversity of perspective and interests and things that I was exposed to early on. But I, I think that everything for me could have been cured by running around. Wow. When I talk about that, yeah. I feel like I sound like such a Republican, but it is true that like I want my kids more in nature. Mm. Oh, I, I definitely do in the yeah. future as well. Like I have, I've told you my dream of like the house I want to build one day. Yeah. Yeah. But I, tell it again. I want to build like, I, it's so sexy. I want to build like a Hobbit style earth ship. <laughs> it's so sexy the way you talk about the Hobbit. Yeah. Wait, so you want to build an earth shack? An uh, earth ship. It's like a, it's like a semi underground home. If I show you pictures, you'll be like, oh, I get it. I see why you like is this. Is it like a disaster bunker as well? No, it's just like, it's just like, it's very, you know, natural materials. Oh. It's like, it's like naturally cooled and warmed by the earth. It's very, it's like, it takes care of its other solar panels and shit. And it's just, it looks, it's exactly what I want. Mm. It, there's lots of like uh, area for like having a garden and growing your own fruit and herbs and stuff. And it's just, it's exactly what I want. I want to be surrounded by trees and greenery. That's, it's, it's exactly what I want. That leads nicely into the last thing I want to talk about yes. before we get into listener submissions, which is, I believe Selling Sunset is coming back soon. I know. And I want to talk about with you because yes. if you would, when, whenever there's a guest, it's like, I was like, oh, I haven't seen it. We're always like, that's so awkward. You should watch it. We've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think is going to happen on this fifth season? I know that they are bringing in the Chriselle and G Flip relationship. Okay. And okay. I also Big know news. that Christine has spoken out about how like bad this production company is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As has Chriselle. Is she having a spinoff? I thought that she was having. I, I, I believe so. I feel terrible. What is the What is the name of like the newest agent from the newest season who is black and British? Um, I forget her oh, name. Chelsea. Chelsea. Thank She's you. So yes. hot. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. They're. I mean, they're all hot. They're all. They're hot, all hot. But Chelsea's yeah. Oh yeah. Really hot. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I, I, I could have sworn that there was something, I wasn't sure if it was like a joke or like a, just what they want, but I thought that Chelsea and Christine were having a spinoff of their own. A re, um, a I think thing. that Christine wants to do something in reality TV, but I think she wants to control like the narrative because Christine is like a businesswoman, I think. And mm. she, uh, this company, this reality show company I mean, they are the ultimate vultures. Like, they yeah. want to get a story above all else. Right. And I think that most of the cast agreed to that and kind of understood the terms of that. Mm -hmm. Because it's interesting, like, I think with Netflix's reality shows, the cast doesn't have to necessarily abide by the same rules as other shows. They don't have to give their phones away. They don't have to stop living their lives they get filmed when they want to get filmed, essentially. Okay. They don't have 24-hour camera coverage. Right. But that means basically that the company can create whatever narrative they want. And most people agree to it because they have boring lives. Like Heather, what's it? Like, she just had a baby. Good for her. Everyone has a baby. Christine <laughs> has wild <clears throat> shit going on. And she has a dark past and a very strange way of making decisions. Chriselle has a wild past and is currently dating a like 25 year old non-binary DJ who's so mm. sexy. <laughs> so they're going to have insane shit going on. The production company is going to want to dig into it. Yeah. And I think that's probably upsetting to the both of them. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Chriselle left after whatever season this is. And I was, then I was also trying to made her own reality show. Oh yeah, I was trying to remember like who else was in the office, and you were like, "Heather's got this going on," and I was like, "And Davina's there." Davina, <laughs> okay, but she's iconic to me. Yeah, she's fun. Davina, I like her redemption. She had a bit of a redemption arc. That was so nice. I know, but her. She's messy as hell, but she had a redemption arc, and I love, I love second chances. 
her philosophy on the world is so morally bereft, I think. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. To, but to answer your question of what I think is going to happen, I think that Jason, either in a new relationship or on his own, is going to get to a place where he's like, oh, I'm actually really ready to have kids. <gasps> and I'm so, so angry at myself that I didn't take this opportunity with Chrishell. That's what I think is going to happen. But then maybe he'll have kids with this new... Maybe he will. And then and then it'll be like, this is so... But I think that he's always going to be looking over his shoulder at Chrishell and just being like, you're a fucking idiot, man. Like I, I mean, they must still be friends at this point. Oh, yeah. But they like, both seem like very nice people. Were you very touched when he cried at the reunion? I was really high when I watched the reunion, so I don't feel like I was touched. I was horrified. I was like, why are they <laughs> doing this to him? Look how they've massacred my boy. Yeah. <laughs> I think that men don't get like reality showed on the way women mm. do. And I think there was just the first, he went into this being like me and my brother are going to be the side characters on this reality show about mm -hmm. these insane women in the office. Yeah. And so he didn't expect any personal questions. Then he had to get his dick involved and start dating and his heart and start dating Chriselle. Yeah. And I think that, um, then he had to get asked personal questions and he wasn't used to it. And I think that's why he cried. Interesting. So I was kind of horrified when he cried, honestly. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I was so touched. I was like, oh, dude, I want to give you a hug. But I was, I, I felt that way, but I was also like, what are you guys doing to him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think, I was like, oh, no, this is like, this is an obscenely personal show. It's obscenely yeah. deep in their personal lives. So I was like, oh, the damage has been done. And it's just, they're just continuing to regurgitate all this like shit that they're going through. But just in that moment, he was so raw and I could see like the love in his eyes. I was like, oh, dude, I just, I just wanted to give him a hug. It just made me think about if you were in a workplace, like let's say you worked at an insurance company mm -hmm. and then these people came up to you and they said, okay, we're going to make reality show about your workplace. But don't worry, nothing in your life is going to fundamentally change. But you're in your workplace. You have a crush on your coworker. A producer comes up to you and plants the seed. I think you have a crush on your coworker. You're like, no, I don't. But then it just doesn't go away yeah. until you have to act on it. Like, what if that happened? I, what if you yeah. worked at an insurance company? <laughs> oh, I would never work at an insurance. I would never work. <laughs> <laughs> all right who are we talking Let these, let's uh, do it let's, let's get have into these listeners learn from us unemployed people oh that was another funny thing about the mushroom trip mm -hmm. you and i had with our other friend which was when she said i think there's a god because i haven't had a job in four years oh my god and then god. we all looked at each other and, and we, we were like, like we, we haven't, haven't had either. a job in four years. There definitely I, I feel is like gone. we're making some people very angry with this conversation. Like, you motherfuckers, yeah. Well, like, we have things that we do to make money. Yeah. But it's like, you know. I know. Content creation, it's different. It's not a job. It's, it's not a, a it, job. It makes money, but it's not a job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's get into some listener submissions. I have one pulled up. Okay, go for okay. it. Okay. Hi, Meerkats. I've been listening for around a year now, and I absolutely love the pod. It brings me so much joy to listen to it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I probably listened to an, each episode three times. Damn, you are crazy. Um, uh, I'd like to apologize if this is very wordy. Um, okay, so to lead up to my question, I'm an eighth grader. I'm young, I know. And I absolutely love writing. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've been writing stories ever since I learned how to write. And even before that, I would get my mom to write it down for me. I think that's adorable. Um, it's one of the two things I see myself doing in the future. The other one being dancing. Uh, okay, problem is I've been in a writer's block for a few months now and I really miss writing. But whenever I try to put something on a page or document, the words can never come out right. Also for a bit of information, I never struggle with writing when it comes to school assignments or anything like that. It's only more personal projects. Um, uh personal projects that I seem to struggle with, probably because I'm trying to meet my own expectations rather than a teacher's. It might be an age thing or it might just been I've had zero motivation, even though I have an ongoing list of ideas in my mind. So my question is, Meerkats, do you have any advice on how to get myself out of this slump or just for getting motivation? That's a great question. Yeah. How I have a you, lot of thoughts on that. I've been reading this book, The Artist's Way. Yes. Which I feel like everyone our age is a doing. A bunch of people are, yes. Yeah. Indeed. And it's kind of about how... Talk, could that. you talk about like what the book is like? Yes. So the Artist's Way. Because I don't know yet. It's kind of a... Um, I was going to say a manifesto, but that's not right. It's mm. about uh, killing Jews. No. It's... um. <laughs> 
It's about like becoming, it's, it, it basically posits every single person as an artist, whether you're a lawyer or a doctor or a writer or a painter, like every single person is an artist or if you're unemployed, you are too. And um, it's the expectations you hold yourself to are the things that are actually blocking you from creating because Whoa. when you're a young person and you just want to create something and say to the world what you want to say, if you're trying to write the great American novel, that's not like true creativity. That's ego. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of about a process called unblocking every morning. You're supposed to do these things called the morning pages. I did not do mine today, mm -hmm. which whoops, but it's like, long hand stream of consciousness uh writing for three pages and you just write whatever comes to your mind even if it's i hate this i hate this i hate this for three straight pages no matter what it is you just keep writing that has helped me a lot with writer's block because i feel like a lot of block is just doubt like what mm. if i'm not good enough what if i what if nobody cares what i have to say and the creativity is just you putting something into the world that you want to put out and you won't know what that is unless you actually write. Absolutely. Do, do you find yes. writer's block with your stand up sometimes? I, I'm, I will say I'm trying to get more disciplined with my writing because thus far I've not been a very disciplined writer where I would just like mm -hmm. make a note of like, I would come up with an idea and then I'd make a note of it. And then I'd try to like do a stream of consciousness, just basically like fleshing it out. And then I would just try that on stage without really structuring it. And then I would just like try it over again and just work it into my muscle memory and then do it like that. But I have more recently tried to actually structure my jokes before I begin taking them out anywhere. And that's helped enormously. And it's sort of, <clears throat> it's on a, a kind of a reason why I feel like a lot of my standup is like storytelling is because it, I find that easier in a way that it's, it's sort of me being lazy. Cause I'm just like, Oh, I'll just do this thing that happened rather than like cup, come up, generate something of my own. And that's sort of like how it feels for me. But, um, in terms of writer's block, I've definitely been in, I've had oh, so many moments where I feel like I'm not writing anything funny, even though I'm like writing stuff. Uh, it's more that I feel like a, I've had a quality block a number of times in my life rather than writer's block. What is a quality block? To where you? I will write, but I don't feel like it's good uh, and, it, and it's not hitting. That's yeah. it. But I will say bits of advice that I have found really help. One, just take care of yourself and your health. That is the biggest thing. Like I... I forget to eat sometimes and I find that I am much more creative and goofier and generative when I have eaten well and I'm just in general healthier. Mm. And so just taking care of yourself is an enormous thing. Entertaining yourself, mm. making sure you're taking in stuff that you enjoy and that you're not just like grinding away at something because your brain is going to get burnt out and you need to, you need to play. You need to, need to receive good vibes from that you need to be made to laugh you need to whatever it is that you want to cr inspire in other people you need to allow yourself to be inspired within yourself yeah and i think the other fun thing about uh, writing is that you can write a whole page and then it turns out that there's two sentences is in it that have the idea that you want mm. and the 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 whole page that you wrote was important for getting to those two sentences mm -hmm. so instead of like beating yourself up how do i get to what i really want to say you just have to try something and then what you want to say will kind of appear within those lines yes so writer's block is just a way of saying whatever you write it has to be perfect but that's not true mm -hmm. and in fact it never will be indeed <laughs> In fact, one? it will always suck. In fact, you're dead in the water. Yeah. Give up now. Yeah. Even though you're in middle school. Yeah. Um, That's our advice. You're not cut out for it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The The real answer is your writer's block is right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything anxiety tells you is true. Yeah. Um. um this one was sad and we want to say we're sorry about it hey meerkats and guests i wrote it a few weeks ago about being in love with my best friend 
After what you guys said, I told him and things didn't go well. <laughs> he rejected me and things have been really awkward between us since. I tried talking to him a bit, but he was really dry. I stopped initiating and we haven't talked in a month. Pretty sad update, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, no. We're sorry. We're not professional. Wait, is this the one with like the friend who's like religious? Probably. Yeah. That's what I was guessing too. Oh, my God. Oh, you poor thing. Well, he couldn't handle it. He he couldn't come out of can, the closet. Indeed. Can, can we try? I'm going to try to spin this into a positive. I'm going to. <laughs> No, 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 no it's true. It is better. It, it is better that way. No, it is. You are living in your truth. And now he's living in your truth as well. And uh, no, but here's the thing is that this is this is going to suck and it, it needs to suck. You need to understand everything that this feels like right now. Try to just let all the feelings flow through you and it's going to be terrible, but it's going to inform a lot more emotional maturity in your future. And this is going to be a very sturdy part of you, I will say. And it's it's terrible, but this is a part of being human. These are these are the lows that allow you to understand what it is to be a person. I think a little bit better. I believe that. Yeah, that's 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 thoughtful and mature. I also do think sometimes just people are not. You can they'll have mutual feelings, but they're just not ready to act on it. And whatever it is, it's like you just can't let it dull your shine. You just gotta yes. go out and let somebody else, you know, take the reins. I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> so let somebody else blow that back out. Yep. Yeah. You and not by was... stepping on a crack. No, do not step. Oh, th that's our advice. Do not step on a crack. Yeah. You will break your mother's back. Also, we're sorry. We're we're not professional. You can't. Okay. Keep writing in, but also you can't get your advice from a podcast. Yes. I no, never. You, I hope you know this. Never. No, no don't listen to us. Yeah. Write things to us, but don't listen to Do us. Do not trust the word we, we say. Are, yeah, we, yeah, we are not qualified by any means, and we do not accept, we do not accept any responsibility. No. But- uh, but I but I will say I am proud of you for being brave because that is an extremely brave thing to do. Yeah. To just vocalize your feelings like that. I don't think I would have been able to do that at that age. I also think he's being a little bit of a dick for being so dry. He could be yeah. like, if he really was your best friend, he could be like, I understand. I don't feel the same way, but I wish you all the best in life. Like, he doesn't have to be like shutting you out. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. You think I've never had a crush on my friend? And then we still, we like, I've had plenty of crushes on friends and I told them they were like, okay, and we're friends now. Like, yeah. it is possible to there, do. There's a, there, there are many bright futures that you have to choose from out of this. Always remember that. Yes. It's very endearing. We got yes. one more and it's we a We got one more. One. Okie dokie. Um, let me pull it up. Okay. Oh yes, here we are. Okay. Hey, I really want to know your opinion of the, what your opinion of the furry fandom is. As a furry... I tend to find it difficult to explain exactly what being a furry means to those who have never encountered it before. Some people tend to act genuinely horrified when finding out someone is a member of the fandom. We aren't hurting anyone, so I'm honestly unsure why some have just the most negative reactions imaginable. We're just giant plushies. Yeah, I remember early on in the podcast, we've weirdly spoken about furries a lot. I yeah, like it's an interesting topic. It is. I They're very like, interesting. I feel like early on, I like made a joke at the expense of furries and I got in a clip and then somebody commented, what's wrong with furries? And I genuinely like had an existential crisis that night. I was like, why did I say that? Like, there's nothing wrong with furries. Yeah. No, there is absolutely Be nothing. Yourself. <laughs> you are You are doing something that you enjoy and you are hurting no one else and you're making friends with other people interested. That, that These are all wonderful things. That you're you, a step ahead of the rest of us. Exactly. You're making friends with common people with common interests. It is fun to make fun of them, though. It is fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it kind of is. I'm like, you're wearing a big suit. This is crazy. I think it's like us irony-pilled assholes just can't enjoy anything. It really is more about us not being able to empathize with your joy. We're jealous of you. We cry every night because we can't be fur Sorry, I'm taking it too far. Furries are great. What's nothing? I The more I say it, the more disingenuous it's sounding. Mm -hmm. 
This is like that one episode where I kept yelling bisexuals are great <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> do you remember that? I'm not sure I do. <laughs> I can't remember who the guest was, but I was like, they're great. They're great. No, it's asexuals. Not oh, bisexuals. I was oh, like, yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, asexuals I do remember that. are amazing. Nothing wrong with asexuals. Yeah. That is oh true. My God. I've also heard, and obviously, if you're a furry who enjoys having sex, that's also great. But I've heard that most furries, like, don't really have sex about it. Mm, about it. I've heard that most of them just like dressing up in, in little costumes. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I did not know that. I thought that I thought that like the sex was like part of it or like the main thing, like the crescendo of it, you know? The crescendo. <laughs> What do you call it? <laughs> yeah, the orchestra. Yeah. It's part of the theater of the it all. Theater. Yeah, yeah, the theater of it all. Um, yeah. If you're a furry, if you have any kink at all, as long as you are not hurting anyone else, you I I think you can and should pursue whatever it is you, that makes you happy. I agree. Uh, the other the last thing I'll say. Yes. I've always kind of wanted to go to a furry convention, not dressed up. But just to observe, to report on? I think if you're a furry who's a fan of this episode, send us recommendations. You can go mm -hmm. to the forum on our website to great furry conventions for Lucas and I to go to. <laughs> I would, oh, I, I, would, I would go with you to a furry convention. Let's do just it. Just be like, ooh, we're meeting the people. We're me <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, the big city. <laughs> It's like most people's experience moving to Bushwick, yeah. but we're moving to a furry convention. <laughs> so bleak. Um, oh my God, the stars. <laughs> furries, we love we love you. I'm also curious, like if you're a furry, like right in, like what kind of animal are you? And like, mm. what's your fursona? Oh yes, and how did you find your fursona? Mm. I would love to hear that story. I want to hear about your fursona. Yes. I do. I, I, I wrote about furries a little bit in like a pilot I was working on and I feel like those sort of they were kind of a shorthand for just like um like having fun and not being like so embarrassed of everything. Mm. Um because in the end of that pilot, like the most like negative and acerbic character performs stand up in front of them and like crushes and has yeah. like a great set. Whereas like somebody else who's very like pretends to be hyper positive but is actually very cynical is like supposed to go to the furry convention to make fun of them i felt i felt like it was i do feel like furries get this like short hit uh end of the stick for um they're like this shorthand for like what's what's earnest in our society it mm -hmm. kind of becomes like the disney adults shorthand um and i i think that Ultimately, I do. A lot of us have to look inside ourselves and try and understand why we, as adults and and like leftists, pick these easy targets to speak a bit negatively about. Yeah, like I do wonder that. One of my, I think this is. I think this will be a good quote, maybe to end on. But are you aware of Florence Foster Jenkins? There was a movie made about her with Meryl Streep, where she oh. played her, and she's someone. I think she was like a rich heiress who would like buy out Carnegie Hall to like perform there and she was famously just a really bad singer and there was it was just like there was it was yeah it was really funny but she said something that I think is so inspiring she said a lot of people could say that I couldn't sing but no one could say that I didn't sing well and I love that it's just like hey this is something I love doing I was able to do it and I did it Fuck everyone else. I thought that was beautiful. Florence Foster Jenkins Perception Corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you know her? Oh, do I know her? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, she's uh, long dead. Long since uh, long since dead. And Meryl Streep played her, you said? Yep. I want to watch that movie. It's a good... I, I have not seen the movie, but I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, that's the lady I heard about. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, and it looked really funny. No one could say, people could say, I couldn't be a furry, but no one could say I wasn't a furry. <laughs> people could say that I I shouldn't be a furry, but no one could say, Woof, the way I could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's, that's a good a, place to end. You have any fun shows coming up? Fun shows coming up. Ever heard of Cirque du Soleil? <laughs> 
You're opening for Cirque du Soleil? I'm, uh, I'm in Cirque du Soleil. I play du Soleil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, fun shows. I'm hosting. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Okay. It's um, I'm doing some stuff. What about I, you, Lucas? What am I doing? Um, coming up, April 1st, I have a set at the Tiny Cupboard. April 8th, I'm putting together a show at the Grizzly Pear in Midtown. Whoa. And then at the end of April, I'm going to be doing an hour at the University of Delaware. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. Are you going to indoctrinate the kids? Uh, absolutely. Oh, cons- uh, consider them indoctrined. Oh, oh yeah. thank goodness. Yeah. Doctrined, they're in. They're in. Yeah. What are you going to indoctrinate them about? Uh, furries. We make learned, them all furries. We really have learned so much. We've learned, yeah. Oh, and subscribe and they're gonna to learn. our supercast. Yes, subscribe to our supercast. It helps us enormously. We're going to be posting lots of bonus content, uh, and we're going to have more guests in our incoming episodes. We're going to post. Yes. We're going to play sick little games. Yes, and we're going to have our guests get naked. Trauma. It's going to be induced. We're going to induce trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any final words? Any final words? I would like to say thank you to Stand Up New York's podcast studio. Thank oh, you to yeah. uh, our like the the head honcho of this operation, uh, Jamie Rabinovich. And I would also like to thank our wonderful tech slash engineer person, uh, Haley Lubis. Our wonderful producer, Haley. She's in the booth. By which we mean across the room. <laughs> She's <laughs> at a little t- West Elm table. Yeah. I think it's West Elm. I, I wouldn't know. Well, that's fucked up. Yeah, you're rich. You get to go to West Elm, not me. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, buying out. Car- you know what? I do something to plug. I'm actually buying out Carnegie Hall. Hell yeah, you are. <laughs> next month, um, I'm gonna sing there. I'm gonna sing once. I'm gonna sing a happy birthday, and then I'm gonna make everyone leave. <laughs> No cake. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Please subscribe to our Supercast. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us everywhere that you possibly can. And we will see you guys in the next episode. See you next time.